Hey guys, welcome back. Richie here from RW Hobbies. Fourth and final part, my kind of mini build series of Tommy Boss's 16th scale Tiger 1. Alright, so we kind of started the process here already uh, last week with getting this thing primed already. So, as you remember, I wrapped the cam primed it so big, I used to black. Um, 2 one primer and um, black paint to get all sprayed, um, you see all over um, covered and then came back and hit it with some whites in various stages you see that's it's like a shadow coat so again we did that last week um, so it's all primed up ready to go and now we're going to add some paint so first thing I'm going to do is add um, well full disclaimer there's 8 different um, markings in this kit I still haven't decided which one, but they all start with the same color. So I figured I'm going to start with a base color and um, then go make a decision from there where we go for camo or what we do. So the base color we're going to go with is LP77, which is a Tamiya lacquer paint. So right there. And this is going to be uh, light brown DAC 1942. Now, I'm not an expert on these colors, um, as you mentioned at the very beginning of this build series, I'm not a tiger expert either, so this might be a complete wrong color, but for me it looked a good starting point. So I'm going to hit the whole thing with this um, LP77, nice thin coat, I'm obviously going to spray it off camera because it's so big, um, it's a nice thin coat so I can see it's appreciated coming through and just kind of see how it looks. So let's go ahead, um, well I'll go ahead and do the LP77 all over everywhere. Also the thing is the turret's fixed from the inside so we've got to move it around and uh, spray different areas and let things dry that kind of thing. Also obviously it's so big too I'm not going to be able to do the whole thing in one spray session. It's going to take quite a few um, times I think to get this thing done. But let me go ahead and start spraying and I'll be right back. Alright so got the paint down. Again we're using the old um, LP77 and um, yeah, no problem at all. Nice thin coat and a thin, really not like maybe sixty percent thinner, um, really thin coat um, sprayed on. Didn't hose it on by any means, and because I did that, I think I might get away using one gel for the whole thing, which is pretty awesome. Because um, I want the, I appreciate it coming through, just kind of really kind of light coat. Still got to paint the wheels, so but I'm thinking what I I've, I've got about half a jar thinned of this left, and I think that'd be enough just for the um, the wheels. So good, good score without not buying tons of paint at least. Um, so. Here she is. It's going to be tricky because we're kind of in between cameras here. So that one's going to be hard to see and this one's going to be a lot far away. So let me kind of lean forward and kind of show you what we've got going on here on the big camera. And I hope you agree. It's looking pretty awesome. I kind of want to leave it just like this and move on and start weathering. But I'm so happy with how it finishes. But nevertheless, I'm going to try some camo. But I've got to be very careful with the camo. Again, with the trigger trigger, trigger um, discipline to keep it very light and faded to match with this paintwork. I can't do really thick green to it would look wrong. So I really love it the way it is, but I'm going to do the camo because I'm thinking this is more like a North Africa kind of look and I put Western Europe like Zimmerit on it. So that's kind of what I'm going with here. Again, I'm going to close up camera and apologize. It's like the neighbors have fired up the, um, the lawnmower. So I'm fighting with that too. If you hear the noise in the background. So there we go. So yeah, awesome. That's paint. I really like how it's looking. Now I'm, I'm definitely going to keep away from the old um, clear coats where possible. And there's only about three or four decals to go on this. If I'm getting them on with like no, they're not too heavy and getting them on looking okay, I'm going to avoid um, clear coating this. So I think I just like natural paint color. And I don't want to affect that look um, at all. So mentioned did the LP77. Now dark green. So well, I guess I should talk about what I'm going to do, right? So there's eight schemes on here as we talked about before seven on the back and I'm gonna do the number one on here um, so got the close up here you can see a scheme it's pretty straightforward just a dark green um, camo on top I really do like six and eight which is basically the same scheme but it's over I really like the look of this the fading and appreciating I don't want to ruin it by putting too much camo on so these look pretty awesome so um, I'm just can okay, stick with number one um, Three, two, one. I have no idea what kind of regiment or whatever it's from, but um, there we go. So it's calling out on the instructions here, um, dark green, F, dark green, H70. Now, H70 
is a gray color. So I think the instructions may be wrong. A typical hobby boss, right? So I'm going with dark green. I don't necessarily have the right color in mind. So I'm think I'm gonna go with this guy, which is XF58 olive green. Again, we're gonna do light, very light bait muted coat on this one. Very highly thinned um, XF58. Now. Bear in mind, I'm colorblind, and I'm also not doing this for historical accuracy, so follow, if you're following along at home, use your own discretion. It's a dark green color. I'm sure there's a proper like um, military color out there to match it, but I'm just going to go with um, olive green because I think it's going to look okay. And then plus, once I added all my weathering to this, the colors are going to be irrelevant anyway because it's um, going to shift everything. So XF58 dark green is what I'm going for. I, sorry, olive green is what I'm going for, and um, I'm going to give a shot the airbrush and just really again really delicately put this camo down hopefully and put it down thinly and still keep that pre shading coming through even though i'm using a dark color it's a very thin coat and just kind of break this up a little bit um and yeah there we go now 1.2 is obviously that the turret is fixed from the inside unfortunately so when i did spray paint this i did move the turret to certain positions and spray ground it so we didn't have any you know big marks underneath if we move the turret um, when we display this model um, so yeah, so there we go. So looking awesome right now. Hopefully that we're over the camo fingers crossed So I'm going over to the spray booth and I'll work my way around this take some time and get this um, Dark green camo put down onto this tank Okay, so as you see here, well, maybe not hidden down here, but we've got the camo on and the wheels on and we're looking at business right now mm, She is heavy heavy. Um, so Let's talk about this. So did the olive green XF58 as I mentioned and I tried to do it faintly to kind of match the um, the rest of the tank and just didn't look good so I had to kind of go a little bit thicker and it was too dark so I mixed it 50-50 with the, the base color the LP77 and then sprayed the inside like like kind of bleach it down like, like doing my aircraft like basically hit the inside of the camo and just dial it back and I did that and it looks a lot more subtle and, and better I think so I did that and then after that was done took my um, XF57 regular Tamiya buff and um, regular Tamiya buff and just lightly just give a quick misting coat over it to kind of tie it all in and again it mutes it down and looking good so did that um, got the wheels on next um, we talked about the wheels last week and spoiler alert so we talked about how we had to drill out the holes to get the pins in and I think I used um, a 1 8 drill bit now don't uh, I'll say don't I did that and maybe a little too big because I put the wheels and tracks on picked it up and the wheels still fell off <laughs> so they fit no problem at all but it's a little too loose so I had to go back a little super glue on each one just glue the wheels in place which is not a problem so I'm not going to push this around the living room floor so um, the wheels are glued in place so if you are going to drill up those holes again probably get the pins in maybe drop down the size drill a bit um, just a little bit smaller um, fit, so it fits a little bit more snugly these um, these pins so they're not going to fall out um, when you lift it up like I did. So that's not a problem, but tracks on. Um, tracks look okay. Um, I think maybe a couple of extra links might be better to give a little bit more sag, to be honest with you. I do have some extras. You do get a little few extras in the um, the set. So they sell 96, maybe like 90. I think you might be a good kind of um, good way to go. Uh, to be honest, I don't know if I'd bother to take them all off and, and add two more links, but paint them up and stuff. But um, there's a little bit there, but I can kind of show you again. It's still a little too tense, um, taut for my liking. But while we're on the big camera here, let me kind of show you some better off what we've got going on here. Go back. The other side. And there she is. And it does have working suspension. Somewhat. But gluing them in place kind of hampered that a little bit. Now, while I was falling around and getting the tracks on and the wheels on and stuff, I did kind of chip a lot um, of this Zimmerit, so I had to go back and just touch it up a little bit. So, a couple of things with Zimmerit. So, again, the first time using this with the old joint compound um, we talked about previously, it went on pretty good. Two things, so it chips pretty easily. So. You know, if you're handling this thing, be careful. And like I said, putting it down, it just comes off, and then it's obviously white underneath. You have to touch it up. Second thing is, um, didn't like water, so putting on the, the few dec decal, put decals on too, like all five of them, um, and just I noticed in the back one, in particular, adding a little bit of water to it, to, to, to top of the paint, and then adding the decal, it turned it white behind it, got rid of the paint, and just 
reactivated the um, the putty. So you could put a clear coat down, that'll probably protect it maybe. I didn't do any clear coats on this guy. Um, so that's another thing I mentioned. So again, viewer discretion, um, use this as you see fit. I've never used Dun Zimmer it before. It's my first time. Um, it looks good nonetheless, but um, but yeah, like viewer discretion. Um, so there we are, that's the base colors down. Um, we still got all detail painting to do. We got like painting the, the gun and various other parts. Um, I did go through and just like recently all the, um, excuse me, use my voice. The viewing ports, I came back with Mod Podge Super Gloss for an extreme with a toothpick and literally just touched every single um, window and it's still wet but it's been dry crystal clear and get that glass effect because you have no clear parts in this kit um, so done that so that's it pretty much painted got decals on the main paint done added the, um, the track links no problem at all I got one on this side because I forgot to draw holes on the inside and I'm not taking the whole tank apart at this point so I've got to put one on that side and all five on this side and that is pretty much up to date where we're at we're getting close we've got all the tools to build that kind of stuff but um i think next part is to kind of start weathering this and, and create you know it's still, it's still the pre-shape looks pretty good it doesn't look like a toy i don't think to me it looks pretty good but definitely needs weathering now to take this up a notch so let me kind of clear my bench and we'll get going with some washes and get this thing weathered up all right so Moving on to the weathering and a couple of things here. I'm not going to go into much detail because we kind of, well, I have discussed them many times before on the channel. Um, any weathering video on my aircraft builds, which they're probably 20 or 30 at least on my channel, go for it at the same time every every um, build series. So I'm not going to go for a detail on this. I'm just going to highlight the products I'm using. So first we did a pin, pin wash. So basically taking my Aptilon, not neat oil paint, or sort of oil paint, um, Shadow Brown and mixed it into a little container with some enamel thinners nice translucent kind of um, thin wash and just applied it all over anywhere um, raised areas and especially the zimmer to pick out some of that detail to make it more pronounced so i did that and then i came back with the buff and using a paintbrush we can see got some left over here so tiny little piece and well i can just do that a little bit paint's yeah, paint's still wet, like this old paint takes forever to dry. So this is from last night and it's still wet, workable. So on light areas, um, I wanna highlight, um, just finding a good spot like here, on top of the turret here, just adding a couple of few little dots like that. And with another brush, I'm just gonna blend it in. Simple as that. Now I've done that all the way over the um, the tiger here, and now I'm gonna pause it. I'm gonna put it over to the other side of the bench and uh, work on some other stuff. So all these holes you see here for various parts, like tow cables and tools, that kind of stuff. So I want to paint all those separately, and then we're gonna add them all on at the um, and then continue with the weathering. So I want to weather those at the same time um, for the rest of the weathering. So quick little glimpse of how we're looking here. Looking pretty awesome. And like I said, I'm on now work on all these kind of things which are primed up, like shovels and that kind of stuff. So I'm gonna paint those up, um, get them applied to the to the tank hole and um, the turret wherever they go, and um, yeah, then we can move on with the rest of the rev weathering. All right, so paint all tools up, no problem at all, and um, let's and apply it all obviously around the tank here, all the various parts. Now let's kind of talk through what I did. So I primed, I think, Mr. Surface of 1500 black. That just works great for any metallic kind of stuff. Then this is steel, owlclad. I've had this a while, but it doesn't seem very um, steely for me, the right color. So I sprayed the cables with this, um, and then came back and gave a misting of X LP38 flat aluminum or aluminum. And really, if I move this part around a little bit, you can see where I just highlighted certain areas, like the middle here and the end, and just very lightly misted it on, gives some kind of nice break, you know, tonal variation in the metallics. I think it worked really good. So that was the LP38. Um, the LP19, used for all the tools, like the, um, the shovel and the um, sledgehammer and all the other bits on here. Um, so LP, again, LP gunmetal, LP819, sorry. And then I came back with the same LP38 and just sprayed again a little bit um, 
very carefully, a little bit misting on there. It's a great, again, it gives some more tonal differences. The wooden handles for the tools, I use dark yellow, which is XF70. I just painted the tools. And um, what I did first, I just masked up the brackets with some one mil Tammy masking tape and then just sprayed over. And then once that dried a little bit, I came back with some brown panel accent liner and just hit the wood parts. Um, a little bit washed, add some um, kind of wood effects kind of thing. Um, I took that straight from Andy's Hobby Headquarters years ago. Um, so that's how I did the tools. Super glued them all on, no problem at all. Back here, again, these pesky clips. We had to open them up to get the, the um, photo etch on, and now we have to open them up to get the cable underneath as well. Um, so don't glue these down um, if possible. And um, we're pretty much all assembled. The only thing we're missing now is the, the, the machine gun on top. Now, I've I'm going to put it together and see how it looks. It looks a little softly molded, so I still want to decide whether I'm going to get the, um, the, the, um, the metal one or not. But it might go together okay. So, two parts, um, and this guy's obviously going to go on top here. Uh, oh, I should mention the, 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 um, the machine gun on the front here was Vallejo Model Air Metallic Black, is what I like to use for gun stuff. Um, then on the back here, this tool, ugh, it's heavy to move around though. This guy right here, again, super glued on, and that was just straightforward LP19 gun metal for that. And that is pretty much the rundown of how I've done the tools here. So definitely do them separately. So much easier to do them separately and add them on at the end, um, way better. And also just a reminder with this stuff to make sure, again, when you're doing a zimmer it, before you put this thing together, from the inside, just drill out the holes, which doesn't help with your placement. There's a couple of holes I missed here, especially on the side. Um, I'm trying to hold this thing. I find it's better to move it around with the side skirts is the way to move this thing. So this guy on the side here, especially, there's so many different holes holding this on. A um, couple of holes weren't drilled out, but I had a few which you know gave me a good idea. And the ones where I didn't drill out, I just cut the pin off the back and just the whole thing was super glued on. Um, so no problem at all. And that is kind of where we're at. So looking good, we'll get the final straight. So I can get the gun build up, see how that looks. And we've got a little bit more weathering left to do yet. Some washes and stuff, maybe some acrylic washes. I haven't decided yet. So I kind of want to kind of ponder it a little bit. What I'm gonna do my next steps. Again, I don't want to do this as a, spend weeks, you know, like a night shift doing amazing weathering and stuff. That's beyond my capabilities. I just want to get this, you know, basic weathering, but I don't want it super like beaten up or like caked in mud. So just find that right balance. So I'm gonna get the gun made up and then ponder what my next moves are with the weathering. Um, we'll come back and we'll get this thing finished. Right, so I'm done. So I wanna reveal time again. I've got a couple other things. So I did the pin wash, a um, little bit of neat oils. And all I did since then was two th further things. Simple wash, um, grime clay wash. Right here, this guy. Flory models, but other brands are available. And what I did, normally you see me apply to the brush and rub it off. This time I just put it for an airbrush and just sprayed it on the lower side, grime around the bottom, and um, just left it. And that was it, didn't touch it. No coat, seal, clear coat over it or anything, just simple spray around the bottom and a few little random areas. Um, didn't use my $200 airbrush for this. I have a funny spray, spraying any kind of clay wash. You, you could use your normal airbrush probably and just make sure you clean it really well afterwards, but I have a cheap. $10, $15 Chinese airbrush from eBay, I've had for years, which I used really for this kind of job here, spraying weird stuff like clay wash. So let that dry. And the only other thing I did at the back end here, which I don't know if you can see it in the camera so well, um, it's too big to kind of move around, but I put on the rust up the back here and simply just got, looked at my stash of um, weathering products. I have an AK light enamel rust wash. So these are basically just your Aptilon oils. If I reach over, ooh, it's basically just these guys mixed with enamel thinner. That's all it is. Um, so that's why I pretty much get oils and do it myself. Um, these have a terrible problem of drying out very quickly. And as soon as you know it, you open a bottle and it's just thick pigment and um, no carrier in there. So make your own up, it's a lot easier. But I had this lying around, so rust. What I did simply was with my brush, just dab certain areas and then with neat enamel thinner, my preference is X20, the Tamiya one, the blue top. Just 
again, tapped on more thinner and let it just run down. And the thinner, um, enamel thinner here just really works well with this, thins out the paint and just makes it kind of blend in a little bit better. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is we're done. So pretty simple weathering, not gone too much crazy. Um, could I do more stuff on here? Absolutely. Am I? No. And that's the beauty of modeling and my prerogative. I've kind of gone as far as I want to go with this. I, I want to put the thing together and paint it and um, basic weathering. And that's what I've done. I could quite easily spend the next three evenings just purely working rust work on these two pieces at the back. But do I want to do that? No. Uh, there's so many other projects I want to work on. So, so much more exciting stuff being my hobby I want to do. I just don't want to sit down and spend six months um, detail weathering this, which you could do if that's your jam. Fine. That's why this kit's so great. For me, it looks awesome where it is. I'm lightly weathered, put together, and it was a fun little project. So, yeah, that's it. So I'm going to, as I did with my F14, my new um, photographic stands, the tree stump in the backyard, I took it out there, and then let's um, do a quick kind of look around um, the video there and um, see how we're looking in the daylight. So this is the finish, well, my finish for now. Um, as you see, it, it's a really cool kit. The whole the hole is basically put together with four screws. A little bit Parks work, Works-esque, like your Diagonstini stuff, because you got a lot of like little cogs and screws and stuff. A um, few real problems, sure, but I think, as I mentioned before, $90 for this kit, the amount of plastic you get, the size of it, it's a really good deal, I think. So the tracks, um, I did go the effort. I did take out four ejection pin marks on every single track which was about 800 total. And I spent a good weekend just doing that, which actually wasn't bad. I put a podcast on or a YouTube video, just sat here and just worked away and got all the tracks built up. Um, that's the first thing I did. They were beautiful. Um, all the wheels were pre-cut. They come with rubber, go around it, pretty straightforward. Um, just tons of them to do. And yeah, and then first time ever, I did some homemade Zimmerit to kind of spice it up a little bit. So I got the old... Um, joint compound or spackle and just slapped it on. Um, originally, I think I tried a Vallejo model, um, Vallejo white putty, which for 35th or 72nd scale would be perfect, but for something this size, it was just too thin. So I just need to smear it all on. So I got some spackle, just slapped it all on, and you get the photo etch tool um, for the Zimber. It comes with the kit, um, which is great. So did that, and it looks really awesome. Um, did that, um, painted it up, simple, basic camouflage pattern, I guess. I'm not sure these are actually accurate colors, but again, it's my model and I just did what I wanted to do basically in this one. So did that, um, looking really good with Zimrit. The only note is with these decals weren't great. And um, if trying to adding the water to the decal to help it settle, it reactivated with the joint compound, the spackle I used. So it turned it white, um, got rid of the paint behind it. I put on top of it. So just be wary that if you'd use that product. I didn't seal it or anything, so maybe I should at least seal it in with a clear coat or something, maybe. But it's not a toy, it's a display piece. We're not gonna be keep touching it and stuff. Um, but yeah, weathered it using a pin wash. Um, came up some neat oils, buffed some buff and buff areas. And then like I just mentioned, the two the grime, sprayed on the grime and then a little bit of rust on the back. And that got us where we are at. Um, the only thing to note, a couple of Problems really were the, there's a gap in the front here with a gun mantle. Um, so I glued this in place. It was kind of flapping around anyway, the barrel. So I just glued it in place in like kind of halfway. So there's a couple of mil gap each side, but you can't really see inside it. So that was the thing. Um, back here, the instructions are wrong. The screws don't really match up with the instructions. Putting the, um, the turret together, it's not a big deal. We're just going to screw two outer pegs. Put in video I did, uh, rather than the middle one. And I think that was about it. Um, I know the suspension was a pain in the ass putting all the springs and stuff in, but <laughs> so beauty, six, 16 scale, massive tank. Um, I just recently did a review of my 16 scale Jeep, which I think is gonna be a lot better because it's gonna be a lot smaller than this. The Jeep's a lot smaller, but you still got the same scale to go ahead and do scratch building and detail work. Um, this one, you can knock yourself out. I used all the tools and stuff with a set. I didn't go above and beyond what's in the box. Um, so you can definitely go all kinds of like stowage to build it up. Um, and again, like I mentioned earlier, you can knock yourself out if you love weathering, you can do a panel at a time and spend weeks or months on this guy and to your heart's content and it'll look absolutely awesome. I think I achieved what I did. Um, my goal was to make it look, look like a toy. I don't think it does personally. I think it looks, it looks does look like a scale model. And um, yeah, I'm really happy with it. Now it's massive. What am I gonna do with it? I don't know. Um, <laughs> it's gonna make, it makes a great doorstop. Um, 
for now, I think I put it in the corner of my bench. Um, it'll probably get moved along some point in time, like most of my models. I keep a few, you know, because he's behind me, but most of these guys get, you know, moved on and um, goes to other homes and stuff. So that is it. Just four simple parts, a quick and down and dirty mini build series. I'm not an armor guy by any means. I've, you know, I've been doing mostly aircraft you see behind me, but I took a stab at it and it turned out pretty good. So totally out of the box. Um, didn't add anything extra to this. And this is what I ended up with. Like I mentioned, um, I've took this as far as I want to go in terms of weathering and building it. I've got other projects I want to work on. It doesn't stop me maybe in, you know, dark winter's night, I'm bored, pull this back out and work on a couple of panels, do some more weathering. That's the beauty of modeling, right? You can always keep working on this over the years and stuff and build up on it. But for a base and what it looks like now, I think mission object, mission achieved. So thank you for watching as always. And um, I'll end the video with some pictures from outside as I always do in my build videos. Um, so stay tuned and um, catch the still photographs and um, photographs, not videos, and um, I'll see you next time. See ya, bye.